Bible, God in the Gospel, hope seen in Jesus, hope yet to come. You are our center, daylight or darkness, freedom or prison, you are our home. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Fresh as the morning, sure as the sunrise, God always faithful, you do not change. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise God, all you angels. Praise God, all you heavenly host. Let us all praise God. Welcome to our online service with Cornerstone and Westminster for this, the first Sunday after Christmas. I trust that you have had a blessed Christmas despite the challenges of Christmas 2020. As we look forward to the new year, I pray that it will be filled with God's blessings for each and every one of you. I'd like to thank those who have helped with the service today. Once again, a tremendous amount of work <clears throat> for uh, these services from Jan for filming and editing. Uh, we couldn't do this without you, Jan. Thank you so much. And also to Jerry for special music today. To the ladies who have decorated this uh, sanctuary so beautifully over the Christmas season, thank you once again. Let us begin our worship today with prayer. <clears throat> God of grace and glory, we praise you from the heights and from the depths, in the heavens, on the earth, and from the seas, in the courts of power and from the sidewalks of our lives. Your splendor shines from a manger where the light of the world was born to pierce the darkness. In fragile flesh, you are revealed to us face to face. And so we gather with all people in every place who have glimpsed your salvation and grace to rejoice in your love born for us. Together, we worship and praise you as creator, son, and spirit source of life, glorious light, wisdom of the ages. Source of all hope, you invite us to live in the light and discover the splendor of your glory. We confess we often choose to remain in the darkness instead. We allow our fears and hurts to hold us hostage. Our expectations of life prevent us from seeing new and real possibilities. You offer us unconditional love, but we expect others to earn our love. Forgive us. May the new life born in the manger awaken new life in us and allow hope to dawn in the year ahead. Here is the good news of the gospel. Jesus Christ is our light and our salvation. In him we are made new. Let us give thanks to God and be at peace with ourselves and with one another. Once in royal David's city stood a lowly cattle shed Christ, her little child. Christ came down to earth from heaven, who is God and Lord of all, sheltered by a humble stable, cradled in a cow. With the poor, oppressed and lowly, lived on earth 
our Savior holy. And our eyes at last shall see him through his own redeeming love. For that child so dear and gentle is our Lord in heaven above, and He leads His children on to the place where He is gone. Not in that poor lowly stable with the oxen standing by, we shall see him but in heaven, set at God's right hand on high. There God's children gather round, bright like stars with glory crowned. Our Old Testament reading today is from the Psalms, Psalm 148. This is considered one of the Hallelujah Psalms, Psalms of rejoicing to God. The call to praise God is given 13 times in this Psalm. It calls all creatures, human or not, to sing praises to the Lord. Reading from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his host. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. And the gospel reading is once again taken from Luke's gospel. This is one of the three stories that Luke relates about Jesus' childhood. It's very different from the story in Matthew, but it shares the same purpose, to clearly announce that Jesus is God's son and the long-awaited Messiah. We're reminded in this passage that Christ was raised to be a proper Jew. His parents brought him to the temple for the purification ritual, where they meet two special people, Simeon and Anna. Special not because of anything that they particularly have done, but just the fact that they recognize the Christ child. In Old Testament writing, mention of the Spirit is it's usually a vehicle for prophecy, and the Spirit visits only the great prophets. But here, the Spirit has revealed to Simon, who is, it seems, a very average guy, not a priest or a prophet, 
but it, it reveals to him the presence of the Son of God. And the nature of the child is then confirmed by Anna, who is a prophetess who lived in the temple. <clears throat> Reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 22 to 40. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus, to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. But little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me I pray bless all the dear children in thy tender care and take us to heaven to live with thee there
Dr. Lee Carter, a Baptist minister, tells about meeting a man in a checkout line while doing some last minute Christmas shopping. He said that he thought the man looked friendly and so he started to talk with him. He quickly found out that the man was fairly new to the English language. He would struggle to find the right words to express his questions. He asked Dr. Carter, do you speak Christmas? Carter assumed that he meant, do you celebrate Christmas? And assured him that he did. But he says he thought about the question and just how profound it was. Do you speak Christmas? It is truly a relevant question for us. When we read the New Testament stories, the gospel stories about the birth of Christ, the language is one that not everyone fully understands. These stories are written in a language of faith. To speak Christmas, we have to try to find the words that properly convey our feelings of overwhelming joy or as the Gospels say, exceeding joy. How do we properly express such a feeling? A feeling that surpasses any kind of happiness that we've ever experienced. We can learn something about this from watching a small child who it seems really knows how to express joy. Have you ever watched the way they react? They'll kick their feet, they'll clap their hands, they'll jump up and down. They laugh uncontrollably. There's no question that they're excited. That's exceeding joy. The scriptures often describe the joy that we should feel at God's word in almost supernatural terms. One passage that we often read during the time of Advent and Christmas comes from Isaiah 55. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. It's quite an image, isn't it? The mountains, the hills singing and the trees clapping hands. And from Psalm 98, let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills sing for joy together. And of course, in our hallelujah psalm this morning, the command for all creatures to praise the Lord. Speaking Christmas is really about joy, but not about any easily understood earthly happiness. It's a joy that unless we open our hearts to the Lord, we really can't understand. The Christmas story isn't about happy children gathered around a fireplace or a Christmas tree, opening up a big pile of presents. The Christmas story, as we read from Matthew's Gospel, is about an impoverished refugee family who are forced to flee from their home because a ruthless, murderous tyrant issues orders to kill all the male children under the age of two. And even in Luke's gospel, where we find the story of the angels and the shepherds, we start with a ruthless emperor, Caesar Augustus, issuing a decree that everyone in his empire should be counted in a census. The purpose of the census was to find out how many males of fighting age were in that area to be conscripted into his armies. None of this sounds too terribly joyful, does it? But that's the Christmas story that starts out in the two Gospels. That question, do you speak Christmas, starts to become more and more relevant. How do we go from this beginning to our understanding of Christmas today? And I don't mean the commercial Christmas. I mean the real Christmas that we understand as church people. The change begins when God enters the story. 
In Matthew's gospel, this little refugee family found a place in Egypt. They were given shelter and a place to stay away from the reaches of King Herod. In Luke's gospel, the first to hear the news about the birth are the shepherds. Shepherds who were very, very working class people. Shepherds who would not have been welcomed into anyone's home because their job meant they lived with the sheep full time. They were dirty, they probably were lice infested. Nobody wanted to associate with them at all. Yet they were the first on God's list of people to tell about this amazing birth. These shepherds who were terrified by the sight of the message bearers, the angels who announced that birth, received this good news of great joy to all people. And these shepherds had their fear turn into joy at that news. The actual Christmas story as we read it in the Gospels is about suffering and about pain and about loss and about heartbreak. It's about a world that we know all too well. There are still refugee families forced from their homes through fear. There are still murderous rulers in the world threatening the lives of newborn babies and grown-up people alike. But God's voice still breaks through. The announcement of the angels is still a source of joy to all people. For unto you is born a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The language of Christmas is not about things that we say, but rather about the things we do. If we go back to those gospel stories, it's not the words that really matter. It's the actions. This refugee family is welcomed and protected. These lowly hired hands, the shepherds, are welcomed to visit the newborn king. Simeon is allowed to see the Messiah, just as he had been promised. And Anna, who has lived most of her life as a widow, is allowed a glimpse of the grace of God. Wherever Whenever someone performs an act of kindness, an act of charity, the language of Christmas comes alive. The message of joy is heard through the pain and through the troubles. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be the ones who speak Christmas. Amen.
Let us pray. God of love, as we celebrate the birth and life of Jesus, our Savior, we are filled with thanks. Our gratitude overflows in prayers for our world, the world that you love. We pray for all children, guard their minds, protect their bodies, strengthen their characters, and give them joy. Help them to look to the future with hope and trust. We pray for the most aged among us, those whom Simeon and Anna bring to mind. Protect them in the midst of the ongoing pandemic and reassure them of their value to you and to us, even when we cannot meet together. We pray for those whose hearts are filled with pain and fear. We pray for those for whom Christmas is linked with loss or grief. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for those who do not have enough to eat and for those who lack adequate shelter in our community and in desperate places around the world. For those who eat alone without the comfort of human contact and for those whose hearts and lives have been broken by trauma and by loss, and for those who struggle with the many costs of the pandemic. Surround each one with a strong sense of your comforting presence. We pray for family members and friends, those nearby and those that we could not meet with this year. Remind them of our steadfast love. And to any who are struggling this season, O oh God, give your gift of peace. As the year draws to a close, we surrender to you, O oh God, the challenges it has held for us so that they will not remain as burdens. <clears throat> Remind us of the good things that have offered us encouragement in times of isolation. We give you thanks for the people who continue to care for us and care about us. Give us courage and wisdom for the year ahead. We pray that our leaders will have wisdom and generosity of spirit for the decisions they must make on our behalf. Guide scientists working to produce vaccines against COVID-19 and support all those essential workers whose faithfulness to their responsibilities helps us all to cope in these difficult times. Grant us all the hope, joy, and peace we find through trusting you as we pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now give heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you hear of endless bliss. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this. Christ was born for this. Christians all rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you one and calls you all to gain the everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. The child is born. Alleluia. Our God has come among us. Let the whole earth rejoice. Let us leave the manger and return to our daily routines, knowing that we have seen the Lord and glorifying and praising God for all that we have heard and seen. Alleluia, our God is now here. In the name of our God, the Creator, the Christ and the Holy Spirit, we cry out with the angels in heaven and the shepherds in the fields. Alleluia. Our God is now here. Amen. Amen. 